This video on the five superfoods I recently added to my diet is sponsored by Squarespace. So I recently added five new foods to my diet. It's tempting to call them superfoods, but there's a reason why there's scare quotes around that word in the video title. Honestly, the term superfood is just another meaningless nutritional buzzword like cleanse or detox with no established definition. In fact, the term is so anti-science that a word search on PubMed the largest online database for peer-reviewed articles, returns a goji berry study, also qualified with scare quotes, and a suggestion that maybe I meant super fund instead, an area of research focused on pollution cleanup. But the term still abounds in grocery stores, magazines, and on the news, which according to science-based medicine, is an unhelpful fad because designing what you eat based on superfoods can make meal planning more complex, with consumers focusing on single ingredients rather than overall dietary choices. In other words, folks get convinced that if they just eat these magic secret foods, they'll lose weight, get healthier, and even cure their sickness, which can be dangerous because the key to losing weight is a caloric deficit, the key to getting healthier is a nutritious diet and exercise, and the key to curing sickness is modern medical science. Still, there's no question that some foods are more nutritious than others, and some foods really do have profound health benefits. So we're gonna take a look at the science behind five of them. Up first is blueberries. So in a cup of blueberries, you get 85 calories, 21 grams of carbs, about four of which are fiber, 24% of your daily value for vitamin C, and 36% for vitamin K. But what makes blueberries stand out in comparison to other berries is their very high concentration of phenolic compounds and anthocyanins. Phenolic compounds are small molecules found in fruits and vegetables that act as antioxidants. Now, Antioxidant is another catch-all buzzword that, according to Dr. Steve Novella, has made its way into marketing and the public consciousness long before the science has been adequately understood. So basically, this is how antioxidants work. When you metabolize food, exercise, smoke cigarettes, or get exposed to pollution or even sunlight, your body creates free radicals, which can then react with other molecules such as DNA, causing oxidative stress. Oxidative stress is thought to play a role in many diseases, including cancer, heart disease, and Alzheimer's. And as you might guess from the name, antioxidants defend against this oxidative stress by fighting free radicals and may help prevent those diseases. Unfortunately, the beneficial effects from antioxidants only seem to be effective when consumed in food, not in supplements, with some evidence suggesting that taking antioxidant supplements may do more harm than good. So always try to focus on whole food sources. So when it comes to these antioxidative phenolic compounds, blueberries rank very highly, beating out raspberries, strawberries, and blackberries, and falling just behind black currants, which I learned used to be really popular in the US until current farming got banned in 1911, which led to Russia absolutely dominating the global black currant game today. Also shout out to Aronia berries, another berry I never heard of until I read this paper, but they pack a ton of antioxidants. Also notice how highly blueberries rank for anthocyanins. Anthocyanin is the pigment responsible for the berry's bright blue color, and because anthocyanins are able to cross the blood-brain barrier, they might be responsible for blueberries' positive effects on brain function. One 2016 study by Botwell and colleagues found that an anthocyanin-rich blueberry concentrate improved brain perfusion, or blood flow, and activation in brain areas associated with cognitive function. And other research from Krikorian et al. showed that blueberry supplementation improves memory in older adults. Other research showed significant decreases in diastolic blood pressure, LDL cholesterol, and improvements in insulin sensitivity, despite no difference in caloric intake between the blueberry and control groups. And based on this research for health benefits, I'd recommend eating a half a cup to a cup of blueberries per day, unless you're in Russia, in which case you should go for black currants instead. Up next is garlic. According to the exam Examine.com nutrition database, including cloves of garlic in your diet is one of the healthiest habits you can have. One of the coolest benefits of garlic is that it really seems to help keep you from getting sick. The study from Nance et al. found that taking garlic for 90 days reduced severity of cold and flu symptoms and resulted in significantly fewer sick days off school and work. Garlic is also great for your heart. A meta-analysis looking at 39 trials found that garlic reduces total cholesterol when used for at least two months. I basically just try to add garlic where I can. I'll add garlic powder to my scrambled eggs in the morning, and you can easily add some diced garlic cloves to your regular veggie stir fry. And if you don't like the taste, then I recommend a dose of 600 to 1500 milligrams per day in capsule form. 
Since my last video on kiwi fruit, kiwi farmers have been sending me videos of their harvests. My video was played at Zespri's 2017 annual marketing conference, and a bunch of YouTubers attempted my kiwi eating challenge. And despite the fact that kiwi fruit still occupies less than 1% of the global fruit bowl, which is still dominated by apples, oranges, and bananas, despite having lower values than kiwi for pretty much every vitamin, I might add, now, according to the new 2018 New Zealand kiwi fruit book, sales are definitely on the rise, which is great to see. So kiwis aren't a new addition to my diet, but I wanted to include them here in case you weren't aware of just how amazing they are. And also since my last video, I've come across more research showing the peel to be very beneficial, which will not only increase fiber intake and preserve much of the vitamin C, it also may be responsible for kiwi's positive effect on sleep, with one study concluding that kiwi peel might be useful for the development of natural sleep aids. Up next is mussels, but scallops and other shellfish will have similar effects. 150 grams of mussels pack 18 grams of protein for only 129 calories, and the protein contains about 7% leucine, giving it a similar quality to chicken and beef for stimulating skeletal muscle protein synthesis. A serving of mussels also packs nearly one gram of omega-3 fatty acids, while also being quite high in potassium, magnesium, and zinc. And this is important because weight trainees and athletes can become easily deficient in zinc, especially if they sweat a lot, which can then lower testosterone, as natural test production seems to be zinc dependent. So eating shellfish might help preserve or even boost natural testosterone levels. Personally, I've been eating mussels or scallops once or twice a week. I like my mussels boiled in salt water for two minutes and then eaten fresh without any seasoning or as part of a pre-packaged entree. And for scallops, I usually eat them pan fried with a little bit of olive oil or macadamia oil and some garlic. Leafy greens are an obvious choice on any superfoods list. And most people know that greens are good for us, but not as many people know that they can also help with weight training performance. And this is because of their very high concentration of nitrates, which increase nitric oxide production in the blood. Because nitric oxide acts as a vasodilator, it not only helps give crazy pumps in the gym, it also lowers blood pressure and protects the heart. A paper by Mosher et al. found that taking 400 milligrams of beetroot nitrates per day for six days increased total reps and total weight lifted on a bench press program. So I recommend eating leafy greens such as spinach and kale every day or as frequently as you can, not only for their incredible nutritional profile, but also for the gains. So guys, those are the five superfoods that I'm eating these days, but I'm always looking for new foods to add to my diet. So just let me know in the comments below what your favorite superfood is. And before we go, I wanna thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Squarespace is the all-in-one website platform that I use to run jeffnipper.com, where I sell all my training programs and they make the entire process of setting up your website and your online store very simple. Now they have really aesthetic designer custom templates and really helpful 24-hour customer support. And I've actually been using them since around 2015, so it comes highly recommended. And you guys can go to squarespace.com forward slash nippered if you're looking to get started with your own website or creating your own online store, and that'll save you 10% off your first purchase. Uh, so thank you Squarespace so much for sponsoring the video. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys all here in the next one.